the Elgato Stream Deck. Since the day it was announced, it's been on the wish list of many streamers, and for a good reason. Purpose-built streamer items made to enhance or streamline a streamer's content are always going to grab attention from large and small streamers alike. Like most of Elgato's products, it's a quality, gamer-centric item with a price tag, $150 for 16 keys. Unless you want less than half the keys, which is conveniently half the price. But what if there's a better way? Enter the Launchpad, made by a company that makes music production hardware and software, made for music production and performance. It's an 8x8 button grid with 16 extra function buttons. The problem is that the Launchpad sends MIDI outputs which is short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and most programs won't even recognize this. I'm going to show you the simple, easy solution to turn your launchpad into a powerful, colorful input device that you can use for macros, hotkeys, media controls, or pretty much anything you can think of. Now, of course, the first step is going to be obtaining the launchpad. Controlcast only officially works with the Launchpad Mini, the Launchpad S, and the Launchpad MK1. I personally am using the Launchpad S. Just make sure when you're shopping that you are buying one of the supported Launchpads. So the first piece of software that you're going to need to get is called Controlcast, and I'll have a link to this in the description. Basically, this program is what we're going to use to take the MIDI inputs coming from the launchpad and assign them to hotkeys, macros, sound files, or git requests. So once you're at the GitHub link, you're going to go ahead and click the releases tab and then click on the 0.3.4.exe files if you're using Windows. Now, depending on whether you have a 32 or a 64 bit CPU, You'll click on that distribution and then it will start downloading. And then once it finishes downloading, you can go ahead and click on it to run it. It'll bring up this little screen and then after that, this program will. Now I already have quite a few hotkeys assigned, but normally this grid will be completely gray. Here's a quick little crash course on assigning colors, hotkeys, audios, or git requests to each individual key. For starters, you'll just want to go ahead and click on whatever key you want to assign. Then give it a name, for example, test. After that, you can set a color for when the launchpad button is inactive, meaning it hasn't been pressed, and then a color for when it's active or when it's being pressed. So when you press that, it'll become green. Next, you can assign a hotkey to it, and you can either have send keys or hold keys. So if send keys, simply whenever you press the button, it acts like it presses the keys. For example, troll H. Save that, and then every time, it'll go ahead and press control H. For audio, you can pick a local path. Now, these different types will depend on how you want the audio to be played. Normal just means that whenever you press it, means that whenever you press it, the whole audio will play. Toggle means that you can press it once to play it, and then press it again to stop it. Restart will start the audio file all over again whenever you press it. You can always press kill audio if you want to stop the audio, by the way. And hold mode will simply make it so that it only plays the sound when you're holding the button down. So as soon as you release it, it stops it. Get request will request a certain address when the button is pressed, and you can use this to play an image or a GIF in your overlay or other things like that. I personally haven't used this, so I can't give a full how-to on that. Those are the basics about how to use Controlcast. One quick note is that you can have a color, a hotkey, an audio, and a get request using the same button all at once. You can assign as many things as you want to a certain button. So for example, if I wanted this to press Control H and hold send an audio file, 
I could just set both of those and then whenever I held this down it would press Control H and also play the audio file. If you are planning on using your computer as a dedicated streaming machine or if you want to use Controlcast for other hotkeys besides just an OBS, you can set it to start with Windows, meaning every time you boot your computer up, it will go ahead and start. And you can also click Start Minimize, and this will start it out of focus. Okay, so now we have Controlcast working, and it's busy sending different hotkeys and audio files to the computer. Now, the next thing we want to do is if you're planning on using your launchpad to play skip songs or do extra more advanced hotkeys, then you're going to need this program called Auto Hotkey. Now, Auto Hotkey, like it says, is a powerful, easy to learn program. Auto Hotkey stems beyond the launchpad. It's a very, very useful program for any type of macro or automation. Once you click the link in the description, you'll be greeted with the page autohotkey.com. Just click download and then click download the auto hotkey installer. This will download the .exe installer. You can open that up and then you can click the express installation if you want to do it fast or custom if you want to tweak some settings. I'll just click express and then once it's done installing click run auto hotkey and this will bring up a page like this. Now I'm going to give you just a very fast rundown on how AutoHotKey works and how you can use it to bring your macros or automation to the next level. For starters, once you've installed AutoHotKey, you can right click on desktop, mouse over to new, and then click AutoHotKey script. This will just create a brand new file and you can rename this to whatever you want. For now, I'm going to use a script that I've already created that I'm using for my launchpad. The code is in the description. Now I've named this file streaming script and to edit it you'll just right click and click edit script. Now this will bring it up in notepad. However I do suggest downloading notepad plus plus if you want more powerful editing. So I'll click this and click edit with notepad plus plus. This will bring up this program in notepad plus plus or notepad. So here's a quick rundown of what all of these do. It's very simple. F12, when pressed on the computer, will suspend the whole script, meaning none of the hotkeys will be sent. Now, I have this bound to one of the buttons on my launchpad so that I can just press that whenever I want to stop the script from running. Return is just basically a spacer. And here's all of my media control. Numpad 0 just simply pauses or plays the music. These two colons tell the computer what it's doing after you press the key. Left, which is the left arrow key, picks my previous song on media. Right clicks the next song. Up on the arrow keys brings the volume up, and down on the arrow keys brings the volume down. Very simple stuff. My one key on the numpad simply mutes any volume in Windows. I do want to stress that the hotkeys that I use are very, very simple. I suggest going to the auto hotkey documentation, which I will have a link to, and reading the tutorial quick start and then looking at all the different modifiers and documentation that they have if you want to get very advanced with auto hotkey because there is a lot to unpack and it is very, very useful if you need it. So I've given you a quick rundown on how to get the launchpad working as your personal DIY stream deck. Now let's talk balances. There are drawbacks to both the stream deck and the launchpad and I'll outline a couple of these right now. One drawback to using the launchpad is you don't get an LED panel for every single button. You do get different colored lights for each button but you don't get the level of customization that the Elgato Stream Deck offers. And to me, this is the biggest drawback besides integration. Now, the Elgato, like I said, purpose-built for streaming. That means that there's a lot of game integration, integration that works directly with OBS and Twitch chat, and plenty of other very in-depth features. The Launchpad lacks all of this. All of this is DIY, and it is up to you to decide how you want to implement these features. 
Now, whether that's a bad thing or not depends on your level of expertise with coding and how much time you want to spend doing it yourself. Now, the benefits to using a launchpad instead of an Elgato is that it is cheaper for more buttons. You get over four times the amount of buttons for anywhere from 20 to $30 less. And that is one very big benefit is that you can have a lot of buttons laid out directly without having to change any profiles that you can access very easily. All right, guys, that is going to be all from me. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Just ask them in the comments. But that is going to be all from me today. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I also stream three to five days a week at twitch.tv slash etech. The link will be down below. That being said, that will be all from me. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.